One thing I hear all the time is, I don't have time to practice. I mean, Brent, I got a day job, I got to commute to work every day, then I got kids and a family when I get home, or I've got school. I mean, there's all these things in our life that stop us from practicing and improving as jazz musicians on our instrument. And I totally get that, I'm busy as well, but I want to go over three things that you can practice today without even being around your instrument at all. That's coming right up. What's up, Brent here from LearnJazzStandards.com, which is a blog, a podcast, and videos all geared towards helping you become a better jazz musician. If you've never subscribed to the channel before, please subscribe down below. Get locked in to everything that I've got going on here. So like I said, our lives are busy. There's a lot of things going on. Some of us can barely you know, squeak by 15 minutes to get on our instrument, and maybe we have to wait to the weekend, and even then things are busy, there's things going on. So how can we start practicing away from our instrument so that we can still improve as musicians? And specifically today, I'm gonna give you three things that as jazz musicians, we can do to become better jazz musicians, whether you're in the car, whether you're on a run working out, you know, whatever it is, these are things that you don't have to be touching your instrument to do. All right, number one is to learn licks and solos by ear. Now, oftentimes we hear that, and we, we hear that a lot from jazz teachers, that hey, you should learn licks and solos by ear, oral tradition, that's the way you learn jazz language, all that great stuff, but we think, okay, we have to be by the recording, by our instrument, and translate it to our instrument right away. Not at all. In fact, I find that if we are able to hear it and sing it first, we're gonna have way more benefit out of that material. So you could be driving in your car and just listening to the same chorus of a solo over and over again. Maybe you find a lick that you really like. You hear it, you start singing it all the way to work or singing it on your run or singing it at the gym if you're not in a too public place and you're not embarrassed to do that, right? You can totally be learning jazz language by ear, by singing it, by whistling it, by humming it, by just simply listening over and over again to recording to internalize it. Uh, there's one point where I took John Coltrane's solo on My Shining Hour and I listened to the first chorus over and over and over again so that I really knew it by heart and eventually I took that chorus through all 12 keys, right? And when I finally did get back to my instrument. So you can get a ton of benefit just by simply being intentional wherever you're at, if you're, if you're listening to music by intentionally trying to internalize that music and then bring it to your ear so that you, by the time you get to your instrument, it's simple to just translate it because you already know it. All right, number two, it should be no surprise that I'm suggesting for jazz musicians to do a lot of ear training when they're away from their instrument because jazz and improvisation is all about improving your ear. I always suggest the fundamentals of ear training. Work on those fundamentals because if you can start hearing intervals and chords and things like that, you are strengthening your ear. Just think about it, it's like working out your ear. Maybe you're not thinking intervals while you're soloing or you know having to think like, oh, you know, that note and that note and that note and that note, that makes a dominant seventh chord, but by hearing these things, by practicing them, you are strengthening those skills for when you do improvise. So for intervals, you could sing any note, da, all right, and sing a major third above that, da, da, right? Or you could sing a perfect fourth below that, da, do, right? You start working on those intervals and just start testing yourself. Then you can go ahead and move to triads, for example, sing a note, D, okay, what's a major triad above that? D, da, da, all right, what's a minor triad? D, da, da, right? You can start going through that process. What's a dominant seventh chord? Da, 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 right? You can test yourself, and especially this is great if you're driving in a car, right? You can test yourself on all these different chords. Or even above that, can you sing the extension, right? You have, uh, let's sing a ninth, so da, Da, do, da, do, da, right? That's the second, do, da, right? So an octave above, right? So you can do all these different ear training things. By the way, I've done some ear training videos in the past. Here's one for intervals if you want to start learning how to hear intervals, which I think is a great baseline for ear training. 
Now, number three, we're gonna depart from the ear training and go to understanding Roman numerals. This is something that anybody can do. Uh, I used an example in a previous video of autumn leaves and thinking about Roman numerals to help memorize jazz standards. So let's just use that one for example. Everybody knows it and it's easy. So autumn leaves is like a two, five, one in the relative major, and then it's a two, five, one in the parent minor key. So typically it's played in G minor or E minor. Let's do G minor for now. So it's C minor seven, F seven, B flat, major seven. That's a two, five, one in the relative major. At least that's the way I like to look at it rather than comparing it all to the the parent minor, and then you have the four chord of that, so that's E flat major seven. Then we go to the parent minor, A minor seven flat five, D seven flat nine, and we have a G minor seven. But in my head, I'm thinking two, five, one, four relative major, and I'm thinking two, five, one in the minor, all right? So now what you can do is you can take it into another key in your head. So let's do C minor, for example. Okay, so first of all, what's the relative major of C minor? It's E flat major. So the first chord is so it's two, five, one in E flat major. So F minor seven, B flat seven, E flat major seven. And the four chord is A flat major seven. And then a two, five in C minor is D minor seven flat five, G seven, C minor seven, right? And you can start picking other keys to do it. I mean, if you can even challenge yourself to see if you can take a simple tune like Autumn Leaves and using Roman numerals, be able to play it in all 12 keys in your head. You know, just be able to say what every single chord is. You could take even more complicated jazz standards like uh, Autumn Lee or, or All the Things You Are, you know, something with more chord changes, more key center changes, and that can be a really great challenge and really help you use that left side of your brain. And by the time you get to your instrument, that's gonna be incredibly helpful for you. All right, so those are just three things that you can do that will help you out. You don't have to be around your instrument to do them and you'll get massive benefit as a musician from doing them. So what I wanna see you in the comments below, let me know what other things and what other ways can you practice as a jazz musician away from your instrument. Let's fill that comment section below with as many ideas as possible. Wanna hear from you, share with the community. Like I said, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next next video.